Hi folks, this is Mike from Minnesota, coming to you from the beautiful North Woods of Minnesota, on the Leech Lake Reservation, north of Highway 2, and at the doorstep of the Chippewa National Forest. Today I'm going to be doing a Lebanese dish called kibbe, kibbe nai, which is raw kibbe, and I know you might be concerned about that, and so right now I want to uh, add a little disclosure that um, most uh, state and federal health agency will, will tell you do not eat raw meat and uh, this is what I do this is my recipe this was is what I eat and uh, uh, if you do this do this at your own risk so I'm starting out with uh, well first of all first of all I want to give a shout out to a few people my uh, my sister Rini for encouraging me to do this channel. My daughter uh, Jennifer and her husband Jesse and some tips on, on how to film this. And most of all, my son Matthew and uh, his tips on shooting videos and putting them on YouTube, helping me create this channel, editing, doing a trailer, creating my logo and much more. So thank you all of you for helping me out. So um, today can be naive. Now this piece of meat is top sirloin that I had a butcher that I know in Grand Rapids cut for me specifically right out of the bag that it came to the butcher shop. This was not out in the meat counter. So he cut this, trimmed it, and gave me about, I have two and a half pounds here. And uh, hopefully I'll end up after my process with around two pounds. So. Here's the recipe for kibbe nai. I'm using, I'm going to end up with, as you see, hopefully two pounds of, of uh, top sirloin trimmed and ground. I'm going to be grinding it. Uh, one large onion, half a teaspoon sea salt, half a teaspoon red pepper, half a teaspoon pepper, red pepper flakes, and, half tea, and then two cups of cracked boulder wheat. Uh, that with this has been washed and soaked and I'm going to be using uh, with it, two tablespoons of fresh diced mint that's what I'm going to be using here I'll go along uh, also and tell you uh, what I'm doing and, and what, what the amounts are so we're starting out with two and a half pounds of top sirloin um, I touched the counter and I like to keep everything nice and clean as I make this dish um, and what I'm going to do with this piece of meat right now I, I, I took it out last night it's still somewhat frozen which is okay that's going to work out fine because I'm going to take my uh, northern Minnesota creme brulee torch and uh, here's what we're going to do with this piece of meat what I'm going to do is sear it I am going to sear the entire outside of this piece of meat, um, removing any bacteria that may be on there. Take my time. I want to get every inch of this meat seared. Why don't we pause it? We'll come back after I got this all done. Folks, what I did is, uh, I'm going to set this over here, cool room, is I did three sides as best I could in this pan, and uh, um, to be really careful about this, what I did was I then washed my hands, and I transferred the meat to a new uh, dip, uh, pan. 
so that that pan's clean. And because the bottom, you know, is possibly um, have some germs on it. So I transferred it over here. I finished uh, browning it. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, put it in the freezer, cool it down. I'm gonna cool it down cold. And then here in a little bit, uh, what I'm going to do is after that's cooled down, I am going to shave off all of that brown meat. I'm going to cut it into strips and then I'm going to grind it uh, through the fine plate of my grinder two or three times, whatever I need. Um, I have already prepped uh, the the onions and all of that stuff, that mixture, it's in the refrigerator. The only thing I didn't add to that puree, I'm not gonna call it mash, I guess, mush. <laughs> the only thing I didn't add to this puree is uh, the mint. The mint we save later, we incorporate it afterwards because if you, if, you, if you do it with the onions and the spices, uh, if you put the mint in there, it, uh, it just makes it turn a dark color that uh, really isn't appetizing. Put that back in the fridge for now. Um, so this, this uh, today is uh, actually uh, December 24th. It's Christmas Eve and we're at a balmy uh, two below zero up here. And uh, we just had a winter storm come through. Uh, Christmas Eve, and again, this is a traditional uh, Christmas Eve dish for my family. My mother was uh, full-blooded Lebanese. Um, her father came from Lebanon, immigrated to the United States. And so actually, we're American. Uh, but our descendant nationality is half uh, Lebanese. And on my father's side, it's uh, um, Norwegian and uh, English or British. So, uh, but my uh, my dad's mother, my grandmother on that side was Helga Olson. She died when my uh, father was about two years old. So we really didn't have uh, much much influence on, on the Norwegian side or cooking. Uh, we do have relatives in Randall, Minnesota, the Olsons, which my wife and I touched base with several years ago and it was just a joy. I just got done talking to him, uh, to the Olsons uh, a little bit ago. Um, but growing up with my mom, and we had pretty much the Lebanese culture and uh, Lebanese food. I was baptized in a, uh, a Maronite uh, Catholic church. I also attended a uh, Roman Catholic school um, but a lot of the Lebanese influence, and I want to tell you that as I uh, make some of these dishes and, and what I call these dishes may be uh, a little bit different in the Lebanese community than where we came from. And uh, one, one instance is, tonight for supper we're going to have the kibbe, kibbe nai, and we're going to have slota, and, uh, which is a salad with uh, um, lettuce and cucumbers, tomato, green onion, with lemon juice and, and uh, uh, oil, uh, olive oil. Um, now that, that name, slota, that word, how we pronounce it, is a pronunciation that is from the northern part of Lebanon. Um, I've mentioned that word to other Lebanese people that are from the Beirut area, and they didn't even know what I was talking about. I recently spoke to an expert in the uh, uh, Arabic and Syriac language, and he said that that word, slota, has a Syriac influence to it with the O in it. So anyway, I just want to mention this for, for the uh, um, future dishes. Uh, we may call them or pronunciate uh, the words for those dishes a little bit different than, than some of the other people in the Lebanese community. So right now, I'm going to pause this video. We're going to let that cool down, 
and we'll be back in a minute. Hi folks, well, the, uh, the meat is uh, cooled down. I want to quickly wash my hands here, sorry for the interruption. Even though I'm using gloves, I still, I wash the gloves, that's what I do. So it's cooled down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this and get all of the dark meat off of it. Like to about like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it up and I'm going to cut it into slices and prepare it for grinding. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back to cooking. Uh, so I trimmed all that brown meat off of, uh, off of the sirloin. And uh, then what I did is I cut it up into slices that will fit in the grinder. Um, before, after I trimmed the, trimmed the brown off, I weighed it to see what kind, how much weight we got because I put together spices for two pounds of meat. So I got one pound, 13 ounces here. So I'm not gonna put all the spices in. Um, this is uh, a type of deal where you, you gotta add, add stuff, taste it, see where you're at, do some more, especially when we, when we do the wheat. So I'm gonna get it going here. And I'm using the uh, fine plate on this grinder. And what I'm gonna do is run it, run it through the fine plate two times, maybe three, depending on what the texture looks like. I tried this once in a food processor. It didn't work. I didn't like the texture of it. Again, all of this, even though I put it away clean, I cleaned it, I washed it in super hot water. So hot I had to use kitchen gloves to do it uh, before I started all of it. Everything that you've seen has been washed in hot water. I tell you what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this stuff through and then I'll, I'll be back again after that. So I've, I've run the meat through the grinder once. This is what it looks like. And a little trick that I do now is I take the uh, pureed um, onion and spices and I'm going to add, well, I'm not going to add all of it because I don't have a full two pounds, but I'm, I'm going to add a good amount. And I'm going to incorporate that in, in here. And I'm going to... When I was a kid, my, my, uh, my mom used to get this meat from the butcher. They, they ran it through the fine plate tw twice or three times. And then what they do in a great big wooden bowl and a pounder, is pound the spices into the meat. Well, nowadays we've got, I did that in a food processor. And now I'm gonna run this through the grinder And incorporate those spices in, in it. And if I get to the point at the end where um, I taste it, I want some more spice, then I'm just going to have to uh, knead, knead that in. So I'll be back after I, uh, I run all this through. So folks, this is what we have now. Um, that's after running it through the fine plate twice, the second time with the spices. Uh, after that second time with the spices, myself and the camera person tried a little bit of this to check to see what we have. We ended up adding all the spices that I had made. And it tastes wonderful. This is your typical seasons steak, steak tartare type of thing right now with a Mediterranean Lebanese twist. So now this is the wheat. It's been uh, washed and soaked. 
Actually, I put it in the spine colander. I've never tried that before. It works good. But what uh, in the in the old day, what, you, what they do is 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 squeeze the water out and then put it in. But you know, this is this is so dry. I'm going to just start adding the the, the crack the bulgur wheat. The, Start kneading that in. Now I did two cups, and I know already that it's going to be probably too much. But um, you know that wheat isn't isn't that expensive. You'd rather have more than than not enough. And now this is the way, you, just the way you like it. I mean, you you put as much in there, you taste it. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, why don't I knead this in and I'll be right back after I'm done with that. Okay, we're back here and uh, what I did was um, I tasted it just raw. Um, the camera person and I were to make sure it needed any more spices. We put more in there, got the taste right. Then we start adding the uh, cracked wheat, um, which is already drained very well in this system here. It worked great. Started adding that, and don't forget the mint. Took the mint out, also added that, and kneaded it in. Kneaded everything in. I mean, it, I you need some strong hands to keep kneading it and kneading it and kneading it to get it in there so that everything all of the flavors, all the wheat is incorporated in there. So we finished that, we got it to the consist, of course we tasted it to see if, if the wheat consistency was what we liked. It's tear liking. And then we plated it up and uh, this is what we ended up with. And um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap, put it in the fridge, keep it cold and uh, then we'll have it for supper. And tomorrow, what my mom usually did is made, made a bake, baked kibbe. And you can go online and get some recipes for doing that, essentially. You put some oil into a, a pan and uh, you bake it at, I don't know, so many degrees. And you need oil on, in the pan, a little bit on top, olive oil, because there's no fat in here. So it isn't, you know, you need to incorporate it some oils into it. Um, tomorrow I am going to, I think, make a dish, a recipe I got from my Aunt Patsy called Snuba. And what it is is the same thing, but you make little footballs out of it, put oil in the pan, and put the pan in the oven, you bake it like that, maybe turning it a little bit. So I'm going to try, we're going to try that tomorrow. And um, so um, until next time, Oh, my, coming up next, I think now I'm going to be done with cooking. I needed to do these videos because this is what we're going to eat for Christmas Eve. And um, let me check here what I got going on for the next. I think we're done with cooking for now. So what I think I'm going to do in the next videos coming up is take you along with me and do some uh ice fishing up here in, in the Northwoods. Some of the popular lakes, some ice fishing or ice spearing. I mean, that's gonna be a treat. Um, in the future, I plan on doing some interviews. Uh, I wanna to like to interview a guide, one of the people that live, live next to me and taught me how to fish, along with uh, uh, Jake and Amy Parrington. Uh, they used to be next door neighbors and then bought uh, Cutfoot Sioux Resort. And, uh, I may, I may have them in for an interview to talk about the resources up here. Um, until then, that's it, that's it for now, folks. Uh, this is Mike from Minnesota. Make every day a great day. God bless.